we have a new streams release and with it we have also a video which will take you through the main new features. So let's have a look at what's new in Streams 032. This release has more than 120 PRs from more than 20 different contributors. But before we start with the new features, let's talk about two important announcements. First of all, from this version, Streams supports only Kubernetes 119 and newer. That means that if you are using Kubernetes 116, 117 or 118, they are not supported anymore and you should upgrade your Kubernetes version. The second announcement is that from this Strumzy version, direct upgrades from Strumzy 022 or older are not supported anymore. You have to first upgrade to one of the Strumzy versions in between and then you can upgrade to Strumzy 032. We will talk about this a bit more later in this video. One of the new main features in this release is of course support for Apache Kafka 3.3.1. Together with it, this version also supports Kafka 3.2.0, 3.2.1 and 3.2.3. .3. Support for the older Kafka 3.1 has been removed. If you are wondering why Kafka 3.3.0 is missing from this list, it's because a bug was found immediately before the release and that's why it was right away superseded by the 3.3.1 release. Another important change in this release is that the control plane listener feature gate is moving to the GA. Originally this feature gate was introduced in Streams 023 and it moved to the beta phase in Streams 027. From Streams 032 it is always enabled and it cannot be disabled anymore. That means that all the Kafka brokers in your cluster are now always using a dedicated listener for the coordination and uh, the traffic related to it. This is also what impacts the upgrades from Streams 022 and older versions. If you are running Streams 022 or older and want to upgrade to Streams 032, then you have two options. You can first upgrade to Streams 023, 4, 5 or 26 and then once you are on one of these versions you can upgrade directly to Streams 032. Or you can upgrade to Streams 027, 28, 29, 30 or 31 with disabled control plane listener feature gate and once the upgrade is complete, you can enable the feature gate and then upgrade to Strumz 032. Don't forget that when upgrading from Strumz 022 or earlier, you also need to do the CRD upgrade as well. All of this is of course also covered in our documentation. We also keep improving our support for cruise control and for rebalancing of the Kafka clusters. In this release, we add support for auto-approval of the Kafka rebalance proposals. If you create your Kafka rebalance custom resource with the annotation streamz.io slash rebalance auto-approval set to true, the proposal created by Cruise Control will be automatically approved and executed. You do not need to approve it manually anymore. Let's have a look at a quick demo. I move to my terminal where I have already the Kafka cluster deployed, including cruise control, including some producers and consumers to generate some traffic. Now I will use this terminal window to watch the Kafka rebalances. And then in the second one, I will request a new rebalance to happen. You can check that this is just a regular Kafka rebalance resource but it has this auto approval annotation set to true so that it should automatically approve. So let's do kubectl apply on it. And we can see that the proposal got the proposal ready. That means that cruise control generated the proposal and automatically moved to rebalancing and it's now moving the topics around. Now, when the rebalancing will be complete, it will automatically move to ready and be done with the rebalance. Another new feature is support for open telemetry. 
Streamsy had already for a long time support for open tracing to be able to trace messages from different Kafka components. But the open tracing project is now archived and the development doesn't continue. So support for open tracing in Streamsy is deprecated and it will be removed in the future. OpenTelemetry is the successor to open tracing. And in this release, we add support for open telemetry to the Streamsy Bridge, Kafka Connect, Kafka Mirror Maker 1, and Kafka Mirror Maker 2. In Streamsy 032, after a long time, we also introduce a new type of a Kafka listener. It is called Cluster IP, and it can be used for access to the Kafka cluster within the same Kubernetes cluster, similarly to the existing internal listener. The main difference between the cluster IP and the internal listener types is that the cluster IP listener doesn't use the headless service and the DNS names it gives to the individual broker pods to route the traffic to the brokers. Instead, it creates for each broker a dedicated cluster IP type service and use that for routing the traffic. This listener is useful especially as a building block for different special use cases. For example, if you want to use Streamsy with some ingress controller which is not supported by Streamsy, then you can use the cluster IP listener and configure the ingress resources yourself manually, pointing them to the cluster IP services. Similarly, you can use it this way also for TCP ingress routing. Or you can use it with the new gateway API which is being introduced in the Kubernetes landscape and should replace the Ingress API in the future. Or you can use it with the various tools which do not have full support for headless services, such as the Telepresence tool, which allows you to connect to Kubernetes services directly from your laptop. Let's have a quick look at a demo of how the cluster IP listener looks like. I have my Kafka cluster already deployed and it's actually already using the cluster IP listener. We can have a look at the YAML which defines it and you can see that it actually looks like any other listener which Streamsy supports. The type is set to cluster IP, it has the TLS flag, you can define the name and the port and the other things such as authentication. Now when we look at the deployed cluster, one thing you can notice is that there are some new services which are created. There is the Kafka TLS bootstrap service, which can be used as the bootstrap service for this listener. And then we can see these three per broker services, which can be used to access the different brokers. We can also try to, to exec into one of the Kafka pods. And uh, You can try to list this, the configuration of the Kafka broker. And here in the advertised listeners, you can also see the advertised listener for this new cluster IP listener. And we can see that it points to the per broker service instead of the pod DNS name as the regular internal services would be normally pointing to. So this will lead the clients connecting using this listener to the Kafka cluster to use these pair broker services to connect. You can, of course, use all the different configuration options to, for example, override the advertised listeners, which is what you will do if you want to combine this cluster IP listener, for example, with your custom ingress or gateway API resources. Streams 032 also brings an improvement to the Kafka user resource. It introduces a new operations field which allows to list multiple ACL operations in a single ACL rule. Thanks to that, instead of a long list of different ACL rules, which all deal with the same resource, for example, with the same topic, you can now have a single rule which lists all the different operations. The old operation field is still supported, but it's now marked as a deprecated. Here on the left side, you can see the example of the old format where we can see four different ACL rules, all dealing with the same topic and just giving the user different operations. 
On the right side, you have the new format, which has only one ACL rule for the topic and lists all four operations in a single list. There are also many other changes. For example, the Strumzy bridge can now consume the messages from the closest replica. Or the status of the Kafka connector resource will be now marked as a not ready if any of the Kafka connector tasks are marked as failed. Or there's, for example, improvement to the rolling of the Zookeeper pods to make sure that when one of the pods cannot be started, the operator will not roll down the other pods. There are, of course, also many updates to the different dependencies and many other bug fixes. That's it for Streams 032. Thanks a lot to everyone who contributed to this release. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on Twitter.